Um, colleagues, excellencies, um, it always seems very sad to be talking about a closing session when so many exciting opportunities have been opened during our meeting. And it's always very difficult as a moderator to try to capture the discussions that have taken place over the last two or three days. And that's, however, my job, so I'm going to try. I start with a paraphrase of something that Mr. President said by implication in his inspirational speech at the beginning of our session. And that is this challenge that however much we achieve together, there is always much more for us to do. And the positive energy that I've felt during this forum gives me much a sense of optimism, driven, of course, by the many young people that have been involved in our discussions as well. They're great for energy and optimism. In my um, comments, I'd like to begin by this principle and suggest to you that we shouldn't have closing ceremonies in the Baku process. We should keep things open and remember that the things we start today are the beginning of a journey and we don't want this journey to end quickly. So next time I shall use, if, if I have any influence, Minister, not to have a closing ceremony, but one that just takes note of how far we've got on what is a very long journey. During this forum, we had the huge help of two colleagues that worked with me on the concept, tried to create more focus, Professor Feti Mansouri, Professor Ricard Sapetero Barrero. We brought real expertise to the concepts. And in the concept note that you all studied, I know, we had three broad drivers of debate and discussion. I'm very pleased to report to you that this discussion led to a, f a feeling of solution rather than just a restatement of problem. And these three areas I've highlighted. In the first, we looked at the complexity of multicultural coexistence. And both the academic forum, which preceded the Baku forum, and the first plenary session, highlighted how important it is for us to get our language correct, accessible for everyone, and how the importance of fresh narratives, finding people to tell us stories, were important solutions to the complexity of living in multicultural societies. And we had a great number of examples of multicultural success, not least, of course, here in Azerbaijan, our host country. The second plenary session this morning was a great innovation where Excellency Moritinas, you spoke so passionately with young people, allowing them to share the experience that they have working in very difficult places, in very difficult situations. What I came away from that in terms of a solution is let's not stereotype our young people as energetic and enthusiastic and optimistic. Of course they are, but let's combine them with the rest of us as what I've called on this slide the now generation. That it's not the old generation and the new generation, it's, it's the here and now generation. That's us, and that must include. So what are the actions from that? We must be more inclusive of young people. We must mobilize them, we must remove hierarchy, we must allow their voices to be as powerful as ours, our given power because of our expertise or our status, or in my case, my age probably. And the third plenary we had just recently this afternoon. And this was about one of the phenomenon that's driving uncertainty and instability in the world, that of migration, the mass movement of people, millions of people on the move. But we focus in this discussion on displacement and what we could do by mobilizing intercultural dialogue in a way that would mitigate some of the consequences of displacement and bring more social justice for both those on the move and those who receive. And we looked at those with a very, very stimulating panel. So I think we achieved the focus on those three issues, on multiculturalism and the importance of language and stories, on young people, including them 
with all people into a now generation and on displacement and social justice. One of the overarching conditions, however, that we set for this forum was to transform our healthy discussion into action. And we have more work to do, I have to tell you. I'm normally very positive, as you know. But I think we have more work to do in moving from the ideas, the power of our scholarship to the practice of action. And we'll hear something of that, I'm sure, from our distinguished um, international organizations and leaders. And my final comment is that what's been reinforced more than anything else is the Baku process is not an event. It's not something that happens in May 2019. It's a movement. It's a movement, not a moment. And we'll reflect on that as we move forward. The expert group, if that's a good name, the, those of us who've looked at the concept will listen very carefully to the feedback that you send when we ask for it. And we will continue to work. There is a commitment to taking forward the focus and drive. But it is really important, so a plea, that when you are asked for your opinion about the Baku process, give it generously. It will be received and looked at with great seriousness. They were my few comments, uh, Minister, um, in reflection of our success over the last two days. And I'd now like to call upon our partners, and particularly Minister Abu Fals Garifas, a good friend to the Baku process, the owner of the Baku process, the person who drives and inspires us, to say a few words in conclusion. Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. First of all, uh, we must all applaud to you for the perfect guidance of the forum from the beginning until the last moment. And uh, I think that uh, the, maybe the basis of the success of the forum lays in the very thorough approach of all the partners towards what we are going to discuss, what we are going to do, what we are going to feel during the event which will take place and which is taking place every second year. I must thank all honorable members of the think tank of the Baku Forum who work very seriously and dedicatedly, targetly discussing the matters in advance, proposing them to like an action plan, like a vision of those problems which are worrying the world and people today. And I think that the ground of the success, the ground of the sorrowness of the discussions lays in this very sorrow approach of those people who dedicated their time and knowledge to create this matter. The other thing that I would like to note that uh, Baku process itself and uh, at the beginning was really supported by uh, very dedicated people. And I'm proud to say that even today uh, we have among us those who were standing at the beginning I would like to note once more Taleb Rifai, who is sitting with us here. I would like to note Jean-Christophe Bass, who was here with us at that time. Uh, a lot of representatives whom I see here, and I feel that these personalities are already not only friends, but I can feel that they are those who are together with us during the last almost 10 years and we feel each other, we understand each other, and through our context, we really achieved this intercultural dialogue because we achieve it through our cooperation. The other thing I would like to note that we have really very, uh, how to say, important people uh, around us. Uh, today, I was admiring the session held by Mr. Maratinas. I think that he is a very brave man because to come to the stage with the young people and to discuss with them the matters which are 
belonging to now days generation is the matter of bravery and courage. And if the new leadership of the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations is starting with such kind of uh, emotional effect, I think that we will achieve much more in establishing the peace and understanding in future activities. Uh, I'm uh, thankful to all the participants, all those who uh, had very serious uh, discussions during these panels. And we had more than 20 events, 20 events, exhibitions, uh, side events. Uh, maybe it is a little bit tiring, but I didn't feel the tiredness not only in myself, but also at the, in the people who were sitting in the uh, halls, rooms, listening very at, uh, attentively to whatever is going to be discussed and what was going to be said. So from my point of view, the event is successful only in these conditions. When you targetly and dedicatedly prepare this event and you work in a team which is creating this event itself. Secondly, that the people who belong to the idea are with their action proof that they are following this idea in spite of their age, position, interest, and whatever. They go together to achieve the target of better world. And it doesn't matter who are we, where we work, and which country we are representing. All of us want to do something which is really required today by the, by the uh, time. And the last, uh, that people who are responsible today, those who are decision makers today, if they accept the vision of the NGOs, young generation, and other people who are involved in the problem, scientific sources, uh, uh, circles, and if we manage to combine them all together, then it means action. So the words which are pronounced are getting their movement through the activity of all participants of this process. So this is my personal view and thank to all of you on behalf of the government of Azerbaijan, on behalf of the president of the country, the first vice president, Madame Meriban Aliyeva, I would like to deliver thanks to all those who gave their valuable impact to the success of this meeting. To all my friends and all my colleagues who made it possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Minister. And I call upon Excellency Moratinos for your comments. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank to you, uh, Master of Ceremony. You were great in the opening and you were great in the concluding remarks. And you have the capacity to encapsulate with very, very impactful messages what are the main conclusion of these fantastic days here in Baku. Let me start by, uh, of course, thanking the, the government of Azerbaijan, his president, uh, of course, our dear friend, the Minister of Culture, Abul Fas, you know that he has been uh, the mentor and the engineer for having all of us uh, the opportunity to continue to work, to develop this fantastic Baku process. Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, I'm the first uh, to speak on behalf of the rest of the international organization but of course, I, I'm sure everybody will join in a strong applaud to Mr. Uh, Gabartel for the fantastic work they have uh, achieved. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, Excellency. Well, so, I didn't finish. I have uh, two minutes, no? Yeah? I, don't, I don't want to, to finish. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we are in a very crucial moment in, in today's uh, international arena. Uh, we have been talking about intracultural dialogue. Uh, we have been talking about multilateralism. 
And I think uh, with all my respect, what we are achieving here in Baku process is what I will say, the new multilateralism. Uh, the master of ceremony say that we should address the now generation. That is no older, young, middle class, we are all together. And I think uh, when we address now the need of reform or reinforcement of multilateralism, we have to start to work and invite uh, people and sector of society to be together. And that's what you have done, my dear friend. Why it has been a success? Of course, there were the representative of the UN system, international organization, they would say the traditional professional that are dealing with cultural affairs, international relations, that's good. But you have invited, of course, NGO, civil society, you have the press, the media, we went on live all these two days, no? So people was, uh, if they want to follow the debate, they could follow the debate. You have the private sector involved. So that is the new multilateralism. I mean, national state governments are important, but we have gradually to introduce in a way to work all elements that are essential to succeed in our dream. So multilateralism have to be biased and what the Baku process is trying to reinforce. But then another issue that is being under attack is what we call multiculturalism. It's uh, quite funny. Uh, why multilateralism is under attack? Yet at the same time, multiculturalism is the same. So it's a dialectic that you have to understand. Because in the new world, in the world of big data, or the intelligent, art, artificial intelligence, they have a dialogue. Maybe machines are going to talk about themselves. Maybe we'll see some kind of machine dressed with Azerbaijan costume and, and dresses. Uh, but at the end of the day, they will need this human contact, these cultural exchanges this multi multiculturalism. And that, my dear minister, what you also are trying to develop. So we are discussing with the Azerbaijan government how we could organize a forum where multiculturalism and multilateralism should live together. Because are the two elements that are under attack in today's society. So again, as you say, you rightly uh, entitled Baku process. It's not uh, something that's finished today. It should continue every time and reaching itself. We were very proud to present to you all the alumni that had been working during the last 10 years in, in, in relation with the UNOSC. And that there are an example as others that uh, we can really succeed. So, my last word, my dear friend, is that uh, we are going to leave uh, your country tonight, but we are living with a lot of hope, a lot of uh, strength for our endeavors, and we have to thank the president, Mrs. Alieva, yourself, all the people have been working in order to have uh, this success in Baku. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. My apologies. Um, I call now on uh, Excellency Nada Alna Chef for your comment. Uh, before, uh, may I interfere? Uh, Nada is representing uh, UNESCO, and uh, I must specially underline that during this period of time, of the preparation time, UNESCO played a crucial role in this matter. And Nada was the personality who brought the idea of enlarging uh, the participation and role of UNESCO in this process with the new uh, leadership. You know that our partner was respectable, Madame Bokova, who were at the beginning of this process. Uh, we met with the new Director General, Madame 
Azule, and uh, she was so well informed about the process that kindly not only agreed but pushed that said we will be main partners and we will move forward. Now, thank you very much for having this, you know, uh, how it is, sustainable, sustainable, sustainable uh, attitude to this process. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Minister. It's, um, I'm going to try not to repeat uh, all the thanks, but I do want to say um, I want to pay tribute to three things, I think. First of all, I think the leadership of Azerbaijan and the openness to evolving uh, together with this process. I think it's sometimes very hard to move the partners along, but you have been a true partner in spirit. I think when we decided to say, you know, we can, we can build on this. We've spent enough time putting together the best practice and the good stories and the practitioners. Let's now move to something with more coherence, more focus. Um, let's move from an event to a process. Uh, you were absolutely open and willing and really took this on. And, and, and for that, uh, this is, it always takes two to tango. And in this case, we brought along uh, uh, many continents, I think, which is very important. In a second aspect, I think there are some things that we can do even better. Uh, I, I think we can still innovate more on the collaborative work. We've moved a lot from working in parallel and in silos, and I say this as part of the UN system, and our resident coordinator of the UN system is here today. We have to make sure that we do a better job, and, and now we have Mr. Moratinos also on the UN side to really make sure that we do this together. I think we still could have done two major youth events instead of six. It would have meant less running around, and perhaps we could have spent more time listening to the young people instead of talking and leaving. Um, but, uh, but I think they will, they will make sure that we stay on this one, and I think it was great that Mr. Moratinos himself engaged, and this is a sign of the readiness of the UN to be really there, which is very, very important. And I think the third thing that we really have to do, which we, we haven't done um, from now on, I think this is the President's call for action, is think about all of, this, of the people who are not here. I, I think th this is very, very important. There's a lot of people who are not in the process. There are young people who are, remain marginalized, who are sitting on uh, the vulnerable edges. Um, there are protagonists of conflicts and disputes who do not share our value system, who do not sit in the same place as we do. And I, so I think bridging this group of the like-minded is very, very important. And we've got to go to those places and we've got to bring them in. And I think this is the next challenge. I think that we've all uh, accepted very well. And I, I think that's important. But just to give you a sense of how well we're doing, because I think I do, we, we took a lot of trouble to take notes in all of our sessions, so I just want to do justice to uh, some of the notes. Um, just to say that we did have two, I, I want to pick out two things. We've been very privileged uh, that the Baku process and the minister personally have hosted our academic forum of UNESCO chairs. Uh, for the third edition running this time. We have seen a lot of great work and great things come out of that uh, set of things, practical recommendations. And this year, we decided to, to look at the role of religion and faith using our interreligious uh, chairs. And I think we understand how the chairs, our external experts from the UN system, and the practitioners continue to reflect on this engagement with religious leaders, um, also at the level of communities and individuals. And, and this time, we had a really interesting discussion on understanding the influence of language. I think Mike has already picked up on that. In framing narratives, understanding the roles of education and memory, um, a very strong resonance that continued into the first plenary that we uh, managed on managing diversity. The other, of course, is youth. More and more, I think what we're going to do uh, is really, this is obviously a thread of the conversation that is not going to go away anytime soon. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a continuous participation. We hope to become better at co-designing the spaces of the conversation with young people uh, in order that we can really realize the full potential of the solutions that we wish to prescribe. I'll, I'll stop there, but just to say thank you again, Minister, for being such a great partner. So I now call on uh, our good friend, His Excellency Abdulaziz Osman al Kagiri, Director of ICESCO. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening or good afternoon. And I'm very sorry to uh, speak with a very hoarse voice. <laughs> I, I think I caught cold last night anyway. 
uh, this is not because of uh, uh, backwards weather, it is because of my <laughs> stupidity. I, I, I want to walk in a, in a changing uh, climate. I am used to hot weather, but it is okay, I am fine. <laughs> I, I took some vit vitamins. Uh, let me first of all thank uh, Azerbaijan. His Excellency the President, the First Lady, our wonderful Minister of Culture and his colleagues for the wonderful and great arrangements, the hospitality, the world reception at the airport, the great organization of the forum. Everything was intact, was beautiful. We are all pleased and thankful to the government of Azerbaijan and to the people of Azerbaijan. This is a wonderful country I love. I would like to come here many times. And maybe one time I buy an apartment here and I stay for a long time. Uh, secondly, I thank all the colleagues who participated in the organization uh, of, this, of this forum. Uh, we are making uh, our efforts and our, our, at, uh, the, our best of, 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 of uh, abilities and capabilities uh, to, to show the world that we are united, we are harmonious, we believe in the same ideas and the same principles, we are serving humanity. There are no differences between an Islamic organization or an international organization organization working with education or with alliance of civilization and so on and so forth. So this shows the unity of the world and its peoples. We are one, one, one nation that cannot, be that cannot be separated or hurt by our cultural, religious and uh, ethnic diversities. These are sources of strength for us. From this forum, I learned many things. Uh, and as you see, the world now is, is not a safe world. It is, it is a very changing and, and uh, troublesome world. There are a lot of uh, extremism, uh, radicalism. There are a lot of uh, uh, fearing the other, or sometimes hating the other. Uh, there is uh, terrorism with all its uh, atrocities and horrible sights that uh, you know, shock us every day. There is a discrimination uh, worldwide and within the communities it's themselves in each country. Uh, there is the uh, uh, inequality, there are the poor, there are the rich, there are the very, very rich. And uh, the world is not, is not intact, it's not in its better shape. So what we do now is to find some remedies for these problems and give it to the world, maybe they can take it and learn from it and benefit from it. But the worst thing now that makes me really very sad is the conflicts, the, the violent conflicts, the armed conflicts, where hundreds of people are being killed and millions are displaced or uh, forced to leave and flee their countries. And the, uh, the poverty and uh, illnesses and, and the bad conditions of living prevail in countries that were prosperous and uh, advanced and stable and safe. This is, this is really a shame for humanity to allow this to continue. We have to work hard to show the, the world that wars are bad. Wars are not the solutions for the problems. Dialogue is the solution. We have to convince them that we, ha we, can, we can solve our problems in a very civilized way. Using arms is, 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 is animalish. It's not a, a, a human behavior. And this is a term I, I coined now. So l let us do all that we can to educate the young generation who will, who will live in the future, not like us. And we are worried about those generations. Let educate them and work with them. Not educate them, but work with them. You know, because they're enough, intelligent enough to know what, they, what is good for them. But to be with them, to show them that, you know, don't live like what we, what we lived. Be more considerate, passionate, cooperative, and, and know that you, you, you will make another world which is better than our world now. And this is the, the, the responsibilities of the educators, of the preachers, of the media people, of the intellectuals, of the religious uh, uh, you know, authorities, that you know, they should spread the word of love, of peace, of togetherness, of respect, instead of the, of the words of hatred and uh, rejection and, and, and fearing the other, and the stereotypes that are coming every day about this religion or that religion, this nation or that nation or this race or that race. This is not good, this is destructive. Now, what is the, what is the, uh, the responsibility of us here to unite? and to work together, not in different islands, but as a one, one team. And I was very, very happy and honored today when I met His Excellency Mr. Murat, Muratinius, Muratinius, and we talked about the future cooperation. We have to work together because we have many common grounds and, and, and objectives that, that bring us together. So 
I, 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 I salute him and I salute UNESCO, our old and faithful partner and, and the Council of Europe and all the organizations that we have pride and an honor to be, to be working with them and to have partnership with them. This is the way to save the world is to work together, is to put our hands and our efforts, our capabilities in one pot and work there to, to, to contribute to human safety and to the world peace and security. If the Security Council is not doing a job, he, it, it will not be harmed. We are the ones who are to be harmed. So let us save ourselves and not when, wait for somebody to save us. And I thank you all for your wonderful presence in every session and for your patience that you listen to us and you don't talk. I hope you talk so we can learn from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. And our final comments from Manuel Butler Holter, uh, Chief, Chief Executive of the United Nations World Tourism Organization. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to join the congratulations to the Azerbaijan government and the President of uh, Azerbaijan for this initiative, uh, the fifth uh, in a row initiative, and uh, specific, specifically to Abulfas Garayev, the Minister of Culture of the Republic of uh, Azerbaijan, a very good and very appreciate friend of our organization in Madrid. Uh, for me, this, this, uh, this conference, this event was very inspiring, very inspiring and very motivating uh, in order that, uh, to put in the right place tourism. The tourism, we have analyzed tourism in the latest years uh, in, from, the perspective, from the economic per perspective, and uh, we have forgotten um, more and more the social perspective. And tourism is uh, meeting people with, with people, meeting uh, uh, and understanding the other. Uh, I think that puts uh, the accent on the social uh, perspective and uh, uh, that's uh, what is doing tourism so an important driver of force for the intercultural dialogue. So um, that's uh, uh, as well tourism a uh, pillar for this call for action, for this uh, uh, action plan, and as uh, was uh, previously said, there is not an event, there's a process, the Baku process, and tourism is completely aligned with the Baku, Baku, Baku process. Uh, analyzing the SDGs, we are always thinking, as I have said, of the economic and the environmental perspective, but we are forgetting uh, in, in some way the social perspective. Tourism. Uh, make us more trusting people, make us more um, open-minded people, make us more, uh, more creative people. Um, we can, with tourism, we are more inclusive societies. Uh, that's why we think with more tourism, we are more uh, in, the, in the right way of the multilateralism to build, to build uh, a, better, a better society and to build a better society, uh, to build the, the peace on a, on, a fair, on a fair basis. Tourism can bring the empowerment of the uh, uh, African woman and entrepreneurship of uh, the, uh, the African woman, for example, or can, can be uh, the uh, integration through, uh, through, through tourism of the migrants in Europe. I for the mention a couple of examples that we brought uh, yesterday, then we think that we have to come in, into action, that the uh, international arena or arts to come into action. Uh, and I join as well the words of my, uh, uh, of my previous uh, uh, speaker, saying that coordination is key as, as well. And we see the, the coordination with other institutions when the UN between uh, uh, in the UN family uh, with NGOs, with governments, and that's key in order to move forward and to uh, achieve this back of process. Thank you very much. So thank you very much. I think we remarked in the opening session the quality of partnership, the remarkable partners I referred to, and I think that's evidenced by these short comments. But I wanted to thank all people here on behalf of the top panel. You are the partners that make the Baku process so successful. And with that, uh, I call it to a very happy conclusion. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mike. Again, like on the position of the host, 
Uh, I would like once more to uh, thank uh, Mike Hardy for dedicated participation and very professional guidance of the forum itself. And uh, on behalf of all of us, I think it's time to thank the great team which assisted us in achieving all this success. The volunteers, those who are working on document interpreters, everyone, security people, everyone, TV, media, everyone. Thank you very much.